Hey, what's up, Lindsay? What's up? Hey, hey, how are you? We are live right now. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. Here we go. How you doing? Good. How about you? Sipping on my oat milk cacao hot chocolate with a double shot. Yum. So not that bad, right? Delightful. Oh my god, it's so what? Oh, I left my uh, travel mug of coffee in my cup cup holder in my car. Oh no! So I got in here. I was like, "Shit!" <laughs> you want to go run and get it? No. I'm good. Well, we would. We yeah. will all understand. Got my H2O. Oh, all right. Fair enough. I guess. Blah. Well, good morning. Good to see you here, bright and early. <laughs> Ask the dietitian. Nice to have you on. What's up, everybody? Good to see you guys. Thank you all for joining. I'm going to put a tweet out here in the minute when you're actually speaking. I haven't had a chance to promote this, but the hardcore, the subscribers to the channel, those in the notification squad, you actually get to hang out with us live every that's Monday right. morning at 11 a.m. and hang out with the Dolce Dietitian. That's right. Here we are. Oh, you miss hugs and live music? I hear you. My sister got this for me. I was like, wow, I relate to that so much. Yeah, that's so sweet. <laughs> I like that. And so true, right? Hugs and live music. It's, it's like little thing. things. Yeah. 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 Speaking with someone this weekend about why we chose to pull our kids from school completely. And uh, November, for those who don't know, just a little, you know, rant time. So November, we, we put our kids in school, normal September school season. And it's like all COVID protocols. We were pretty happy because our school was one of the few that was going live full time, like in person. Like, mm -hmm. cool. All right, let's do it. But the whole mask thing and like the plastic cubicles that the kids had to sit in and they can't hold hands or give hugs and like they can't engage. They can't play like, right. you know, so it's like the more we got used to it, we were like, ah, oh, like well, really wasn't feeling it. But again, we were comparing their experience to all the other kids and, you know, very um, aware of what other families were going through. And then in November, right before Thanksgiving break, there was a third party COVID infection. So it wasn't anyone in school, but it was someone who comes and, and serves the school, whatever they did. So somebody who has access to the school, no access to the kids or teachers. So they said, hey, just for safety, we're going to go on a two week lockdown. So no kids to school, all remote learning. And we got the remote learning curriculum. It was a waste, a total shit show. And, and again, I feel bad for the teachers, right? These poor teachers, they're, they're busting their, their, their backsides trying to do their best. I really blame the government, the school district, the board of education for not having protocols in place to help these teachers. It was all just everyone trying to slap it together. We have young yeah. kids, five and three at the time it happened. So kindergarten and then pre-K three. And the school wanted them to be in uniform, locked on to their terminal at 820 in the morning. So, and then they would sit there and like color. Yeah. Like we'd print out and we're like, what is this? This is all, this is like just total busy work. But anyway, mm -hmm. So we decided to wrap this up. We decided to pull them, we'll call the school, say, hey, you know, because of what's going on, you know, all this, the unknown, we're going to pull them for the entire year. And that's what we've done. So for any parents listening right now, we pulled them for the entire year. We registered as a homeschool, though at their ages, we didn't have to. Completely homeschool, completely independent. We do everything ourselves. Now here's what happens. The kids sleep until they wake up. They wake up naturally which is a beautiful thing. Their attitude, their mood is dramatically changed. They wake up naturally, they're in their jammies, they hang out, they eat breakfast, they play a little bit. And then right around 11 o'clock or so, it's you know mommy school time where Brandy like has their curriculum for the day. We have one of the bedrooms kind of set up as a little school room with all the borders and all the cutesy little cool stuff like the, the imagery and the visuals. 45 minutes of intentional teaching per child, dramatic improvements to their progress. And mm -hmm. we're still a part of the Facebook groups and we, we see all the downloads and, and whatnot. They've slowly distanced themselves so far. Now it's like the parent humble brag, but I'm trying, I don't want, that's not what this is. 
what it is, it's just because of the in intentionality of the one-to-one -one instruction. They're excelling now in all of their, their curriculum. So to right. see that is, is pretty, pretty powerful. And then those, you know, when I speak with parents, some of our friends who still go there, they're like, oh, well, you know, we were just worried about socialization. I said, how social are your kids being locked behind masks, put in plastic cubicles, yep. told that they can't hug or hold hands? And this all started because of your shirt. Yes. This, that's not socialization. In my opinion, that's not socialization yeah. at all. And I think at that age and lack of context, I'd love to hear what you guys think, you know, in, in comments or actually, you know, after the video post, I'd love to hear your comments or in the chat that. So we pulled them completely. We said it's all rainbows and unicorns in our house. We have cousins who are their age. We take them to the parks. They're in karate. They're in gymnastics. They're in music. They're in dance. They're in these different classes, which are athletic in nature. And the masks aren't necessary. Lots right. of outdoor play. So their world hasn't really changed. They're not COVID aware, unfortunately, or not, because that's the way. And this is non-judgment. I'm not saying this is just what we as our family did. Thinking like, hey, man, these, these kids... They don't have the processing, the emotional processing power to understand what's happening in the world. And we don't right. want them to be subjected to what's happening in the world because these idiot adults don't even know what's happening in the world exactly. or how to discuss it in an open, respectful, honest, scientific manner. Right. So this is what we did. And I got to say, it's freaking amazing. It's been incredible to the point now we're like, huh, like we, we really have to think about this moving forward because they're advancing at such a high level with their curriculum and their mood is just incredible where they go to school and they come home from school and they'd be like, Dragon. like a zombie for an hour or two afterwards. Right. There's none of that now. Right. So anyway, that's my, my right. rant for anyone listening. If feel free to add comments and chats, love to hear what you guys have to say. What do you, you have any opinions on that? I know yeah, you, so you're, you're an instructor. Yeah. It's interesting that you bring that up because I mean, last spring being put online pretty abruptly was horrible. It was, yeah. it sucked for me. It sucked for the students. Every week I would reach out and be like, guys, I know you don't want to be learning this way. I don't want to be teaching this way, but this is what we have to do. Yeah. So it ended up being like, I had to be more efficient. Like I'm not going to sit here and talk to my computer for 60 minutes and then yeah. post the video and have them sit there and, and watch it. Cause it's not interactive. You know, you spend yeah. an hour in a classroom, but it's discussion, it's questions, it's, Oh, you know, the other day we were talking about Mount Everest and altitude changes and like this person traveled here and you know what I mean? It's more interactive. So it was a huge adjustment teaching online. But it's funny that you mentioned the younger kids because my sister, the one who provided the shirt for me. Yeah. She has um, a four year old and almost two year old. So the four year old just turned four on Saturday. Uh, we had a party for her. But she my sister is a second grade teacher for 10 plus years, maybe 15 years. And she yeah. just, at the beginning, over the summer, she was like, nope, I'm done, resigned. She wow. was, was over, yeah. So she just resigned. She's like, I'm gonna stay home with the kids. You know, that is her background, like she is a teacher. Yeah. So instead of having to teach her, both her kids and the kids in the classroom, you know, she just made that decision. And it, I think it's been awesome for them. You know what I mean? She, she loves it. She has like, you know, a, a time in the morning where they're doing like, you know, teaching her how to cut and all these different skills and yep. handwriting and reading and all this stuff. And I think it's been really good, but yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I, I see lots of, you know, lots of opinions here, which yeah. we appreciate and do, doing the exact same thing. Ben is and, and you know, right. Ryan and, and Adrian and Daniel, um, you know, speaking again, you know, we're, we're friends with some of the teachers. We're friends with some mm -hmm. of our kids teachers even. And having this conversation is like, they're all so frustrated. These poor humans, like the, yep. the men and women on the front lines, the teachers, they're, they're getting pulled by the teacher's lobby, mm -hmm. right? So they're getting pulled in one direction. They're getting pulled by political affiliations. They're getting pulled by the sense of duty and responsibility to their children. They're getting pulled by the mainstream media and the fear and indoctrination that they put forth. So, and I feel so bad for these, these teachers because they're really stuck in the middle and they have a job to do. Right. 
and that's a challenging thing. I mean, you get some parents that are super pissed, taken out on the teacher that the school's not open or that it's remote. You got the board of education in the state that's not giving them any direction, no direction at all, no training. And, you know, just that, that becomes an issue. So yeah, we're super happy with it. Now we're, we're really considering what do we do moving forward? And we we're saying now, and I'd love to hear any other parents who have kids that are homeschooled or have tried it. We're thinking now we might stay the homeschool route for the next few years and then, you know, reintroduce the kids back into school at maybe like grade four or five or six, somewhere at like, you know, around that like, you know, nine, 10 year old. And so they finish, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth grade and get them in even a little sooner, you know, like maybe fourth, fifth, sixth. But at this age and stage where, six years old, seven years old, eight years old. I mean, their minds are not open or they're, they're not emotionally capable of processing what's happening in the world. They're still in that magical thinking phase. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's, it's a disservice, I think, for a lot of schools, a lot of parents um, and, and just a lot of communities that they put this negative fear and anxiety they downloaded into their children's and I, I gotta say right now and this might piss some people off watching and i apologize if it does here we go that but if you're watching fox news and cnn in front of your children if you're having these open conversations about what's happening in the world in front of your children you are scaring the shit out of your children they have no idea how to deal with this. They're creating severe psychological disorders as a result of this. Children need structure and they need safety. That's what children need. And as you know, dis disarming as this is and unsettling as the news is for adults, imagine what it does to children. You know, I got people in my own family who have young kids and all they do is they just stare at Fox News or CNN. And they freak about it and they talk about it and they, they're on the phone talking about it. And it's like, your kids are right there. You are just downloading all of your anxiety, all the world's problems, all the fear. You're downloading that in your children. Right. You really should think twice about that. So again, I'm, you know, certainly not, not perfect by any stretch, but we're at least aware and we're intentional. We don't watch any of that. There is none of that in our, in our home at all. I would be it'd be hard pressed to even know if our children even know what's going on with regards to, you know, the, the pandemic right now. They have no idea. They've had no inputs from us. Um, and that's not a bad thing because of their age. A, a four year old yeah. doesn't need to know this. A five year old does not need to know this. And in time, when they're older, we'll be able to explain, hey, you know, remember when you were on that really long spring? Because we said, you know, they're they're on on, on vacation, on summer vacation. Oh, all right. Because they yeah. understand summer vacation. They still see all their friends. We meet up with their friends at the parks and all that stuff, but they're on vacation. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. My sister explained to my, it's so funny. She, my niece who, who just turned four, she's like, my sister pretty much told her that there's just a, a lot of germs around like there's just a lot of germs in the air because she knows yeah. what germs are and to wash yeah. your hands and all that stuff. And she'll keep saying like, she'll be like, Lindsay, um, one day we could sit down and she's obsessed with Beauty and the Beast. She's like, nice. how old is she? She just turned four on Saturday. Aw, sweetie. Yeah. So she's like, you know, one day we could sit down together on the couch and watch Beauty and the Beast when the germs go away. And it's like all these things like maybe we could do this, this and this when the germs go away. Yeah. And it's just so, it's like sad to think about like that she doesn't even she has no idea what's going on but it is that's her rationale <laughs> and how it is so sad to see the effect it's had on children yeah. and i also have my own opinions strong opinions data driven opinions on the mishandling of all this at the government level mm -hmm. the, the the extreme confusion the the extreme and apparent political bias on both sides right you know i, I got you see people driving around, you know, you see 30 year olds driving around wearing two masks in a car by themselves with themselves. windows up. Right. And then you see these morbidly obese people with, with Confederate flag T-shirts trying to fight the old lady to get in the Walmart to not wear a mask. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So you see these like political extremes yes. running around like both of these are freaking mm -hmm. idiots. But then we break down the data. Now I'm going to share. So I haven't spoken about this yet. Let, let's do this here uh, live on the show with you guys. Why not? Here we go. Everyone's asking me, am I going to get the vaccine? You, did you get the vaccine? 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 Are you going to get the vaccine? <laughs> I said, I can't get the vaccine. I don't even qualify for the vaccine. I am a, 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 a sub 49 year old fucking Greek God <laughs> with perfect blood work. Like I couldn't get like my mom, 72 year old. I want to give her health history. She's got a few comorbidities. She's over 70 years old. She just finally got onto the list to get it. Like how, like, sorry, well, you're a teacher. You might be able to get it. I can't get it. If it's I wanted still. to, I can't bribe my way to go out and get it. Right. Even still with, with teacher in, in Pennsylvania, we're still in like phase 1A, I believe. So it's, there are a couple of places where you could like, if you really wanted to get it and it was like that pressing, there are a couple of places that you could go and they might have leftovers at the end of the day. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not taking some leftover vaccine. No. But, uh, but no. Like room temperature? It's, People were people were talking like my coworkers and no nobody would do this, but they were like, Do we have to mark down that we're smokers to get this? Yeah. And it's crazy. And I understand that, you know, people who are at a, an increased health risk with comorbidities, yeah, you should probably get a vaccine if getting COVID could be life threatening. Yeah. But it's just almost like they're for the people that are healthy who really want it. Yeah. Um, like my sister, for example, she's like just nuts about this whole situation. Yeah. She's healthy. She's young, you know, and she couldn't get it. She had to like finagle her way into getting it. So, and I wonder why. And for my opinion, it's like I am not even lining up to get it. Like all those who mm -hmm. need it get it. I don't want to yeah. take a dose from mm -hmm. a seventy-five-year-old who's got diabetes, right, exactly. and, and, a, and a family history of, of cardiovascular disease. Like I'm yeah. not getting in line until everyone's gotten it. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm going to be watching those motherfuckers to see oh, yeah. if they grow <laughs> horns, right? I want to see, I want to see what's going on. So I'm in no rush for that perspective. And I was at a family party not long ago and we have a lot of, of medical professionals, law enforcement, medical professionals are heavy in my family. And there was a pretty polarized conversation from equally educated, equally experienced, equally accredited individuals of the pros and the cons, which is, and it was, it, thank goodness it stayed a healthy, friendly debate, but there was great points coming out on both sides about mm -hmm. the pros and the cons and who should get it, when you should get it. Was it truly rushed into market? Was anything mixed along, missed along the way? And does it make sense for, and I think this is the big conversation, does it make sense for every person to just get in line and get it? And to those people, I said, that's personal. Like I, I'm not the boss of you. I don't know. It's, it's like that's an individual decision. But I will say, what do you know about it? People are like, what do you mean? I said, well, what do you know about it? What's in it? What did the clinical trial show? That's the thing. Nobody does their research. Nobody knows that. They're just like, boom, here's my arm and I'm going to stay fat and I'm going to stay unhealthy. I'm going to keep injecting myself with insulin and yeah. nobody's, nobody's changing their lifestyle. So it's like just another thing that rolls around that's just slapping a bandaid. And I know like a pandemic is a very big deal, but it's the same thing. Like there was one point where there was like daily stats that came out. It was like the death toll in the United States was like the highest that it's been. I think we talked about this before. Yeah. But daily cardiovascular related deaths were still higher. Yeah. Why is that not being talked about? <laughs> That's why I got shadow banned on Instagram and Facebook <laughs> and maybe even here. Uh -oh. That that exact reason, that exact post. So for like three days, I put out posts pushing the people that are put like promoting these social distancing guidelines. Like, hey, that's great. Right. But you're morbidly overweight yes. lining up at McDonald's to buy a supersized Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. So. Don't act like you're you have the moral high ground if you don't have an appointment with your doctor to get a comprehensive blood panel done, get a wellness check and then start your own journey. Like, hey, like I'm 
wear the mask for sure. I still just yeah. at the coffee shop wearing the mask, wear the mask, socially distance. Like I'm a hand sanitizer king. Like I got it attached to my backpack, but I've always been that dude, like the germaphobe. Right. So like, I'm, Hey, I'm cool with all that. But at the same time, I get my blood work done every six to eight weeks. I go to my doctor. Like I exercise twice a day or more. My diet is, can't probably be any better. I do all the other things. And I pushed out that you're a science denier. And if we're so concerned about X amount of people that are getting sick. Now, with COVID, we know that the mean death age, and now all of a sudden this, this ask the dietitian Q&A, and keep asking your nutrition, diet, fat loss related questions. I think this is a good chat. Mm -hmm. That we know the median age, death age of those with the, the virus is 80 years old. 80 years old. Whoa, yep. that why isn't that in from I've never heard Tucker Carlson talk about that or Rachel Maddow or Anderson Cooper or Trevor Noah or, you know, Sean Hannity or whomever. And I don't care. Like all politicians are, are crap. Both sides are crap. Like this is not political. All this is like anti politics. They're mm -hmm. all crap. They're all just fishing for ratings. How come no one's discussed the actual data, and we have the benefit inside our network to actually speak with virologists and speak with epidemiologists and, and speak with different of those in the medical field to understand deeper and probably a little bit more experience actually going through the data where I've taken, you know, hours in the beginning, I would take hours a day and go through the data yep. and to find like, hey, is, is my family safe? Like, number one, is my family safe? Like we were we get Amazon packages. We would let Amazon packages sit at our house yes. on the front porch like all day. We'd spray them down with like yep. the, the the Lysol. And then we, we I, I'd like my wife would stay in the house with like E.T. I'd like go out there in like my hazmat suit with the gloves on. And I think it's radioactive. Oh, bro, that, that's exactly <laughs> what it was in, in the beginning because that's what they were telling us. Yep. Turns out that's not true. None of it, none of that stuff has been true. Where's the support of the data though? So again, I'm not pro or con. All I'm saying is access to credible data has been very difficult, but most people base their opinions on who their confirmation bias aligns with exactly. and then they just do it. Like yep. I got a buddy now, I got a buddy now who was like a conservative dude and his girlfriend is super like socialist liberal. And oh, hey, I, what's that? <laughs> I said, oh, God. That's okay. a, and I think that's it, it's, it's cute. Like, it's cool. It's like, <laughs> hey, you know, she's kind of softening him up because he was like really like, cons like, you know, boom, like, like, like Alex P. Keaton, like family ties. Like he was that guy. And she was like over the top, like socialist liberal. I thought, hey, this is a great. They're going to meet in the middle. Now he's walking around wearing freaking two masks as a, a you know, a, a young man everywhere he goes. I was like what are you doing? He's like, Cracked. she's just nags me so much. He's it's easier for me to just put this thing on. than listen to her just nagging me the whole time. Oh that God. is representative of what's happening in, on the national international level. Right. It's not data driven. I say, well, why are you? And I kind of pushed them. I said, why are you guys walking around wearing two masks? I said, well, because it's safer. I said, safer for who? <laughs> and they like, they just like stopped and they're like, well, uh, I mean, for everybody, it's safer for everybody. I said, all right. And, and they were at a, a party. I said, well, to like align with your, your science here, why don't you have a mask on right now? Number one, if, if like you're wearing double mask to go get a, a cup of coffee, right? All of a sudden now in, in, in March. But number two, if you really cared about other people's health and safety, why are you not wearing an N95 mask or not at all? Because right. the N95 mask, that's the only mask that's been shown to actually have a, a high level of, of defense against not only infection, infection, but also against spread. So if you right. truly cared, you'd be wearing an N95, not those two disgusting masks I see you keep putting in your pocket, taking out, putting back on again. Those aren't why. Like, I was that guy. And it was just like, <laughs> like the temperature got boiling. It's like, I am, you're making a political statement. That's fine. Like, Hey, do that too. That's cool. I'm not mad about that, but I want to push you onto the science. What does the science say? Mm -hmm. Well, the science says those type of cloth masks actually can increase your own personal rate of infection. 
because it collects moisture. And now you're taking it off, putting it in your dirty pocket. And then wearing it again. And then, and then wearing it again. Like, I see you. So you take it off. And I like, this was the conversation. I saw you take it off, put it in your pocket. And then I saw you grab the refrigerator and I saw you go to the beer cooler. And I saw you use the knife and cut yourself a piece of chicken and put that back down. You didn't wash your hands. So the germs of you grabbing your dirty mask are now on your fingers and now on the refrigerator. And when you go in the restaurants too, you see that. You mm -hmm. have... How many people at like restaurant, you see them like grab the mask and like they, they, they're talking, the mask starts to slide down like it does. They grab it, they pull it back up and then they grab your cup of coffee and they go, oh, here you go mm -hmm. with my dirty little, you know, and I'm like, yeah, like in the in, like, no pandemic, I'm freaked out about that. Sorry, go ahead. The best are the face shields that are like sticking out like this, not even down. They're like out. I'm like, is that a beak or is that a mask? Like <laughs> it's freaking, it's just, it's just for uh. It's just for a lot of it's just for show, unfortunately, right. you know, mm -hmm. so that's our, our first little intro into the yeah. ask the dietitian. But I want to hear what you guys know, think about it. So it, let's keep the, the this chat to so everyone who's here live, definitely like start asking the dietitian questions. We're going to answer those. There's tons of questions now, but also in the comments after this video post, what do you think about it? What are your thoughts on it? What do you think about homeschooling? Share with me because Brandy and I, we're still trying to decide what we're going to be doing with our kids, but also what are your thoughts on what's happening? Be respectful though, you know, and always kind of point to the science. I, I don't want personal opinions more so than I want science. Yeah. All right. I'll Ready, turn Lance? Into a heated political fight. It's quick. <laughs> Quick. And it goes like just too far. Let, let's keep, I want to respectful. Let, let's share information here. Um, let's see what Paul has to say. Hey guys, my question is that it's easy to diet and exercise the days you feel motivated, but how do you keep going on the days you don't feel up to it? I'm struggling with consistency. Paul, Lindsay, go ahead. Yeah. So I mean, a, a really easy and quick thing to do. Um, you know, if you find yourself with a roller coaster type of motivational level, is to start making lists. So get up, jot down some, you know, three things that you want to accomplish for the day. And it's not like you're guilt tripping yourself, but you're almost guilt tripping yourself because at the end of the day, you look at that list and you're like, shit, I didn't do any of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it makes you not feel so great. Whereas if you, you know, check off, boom, 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 I've done this, you know, I wanted to work out for at least 30 minutes today, um, whatever the other things may be. At the end of the day, I don't know about you guys, it's probably some sort of scientifically proven fact that crossing things off on a list like makes you feel good. So that would be a, a quick suggestion, but also just kind of training your mind to push through it. You're always going to feel better after you exercise. If you're, you know, you get home from work, you feel tired, you feel sluggish, you will always feel better after you exercise. Um, you know, even though you're expending energy, you're also increasing energy. So I think just focusing on the, the end part, okay, once you get started, that's easy. Um, you know, I, I teach multiple days a week. I have a group or a personal training client at 5.30 in the morning. And they're like, damn, I really did not want to get out of bed this morning. It was like 19 degrees this morning. Yeah. Dark out. It's cold. You know, but as soon as they get to the gym, you know, take their sweatshirt off, start warming up. Two minutes in, it's like, boom. You wouldn't even know that it's 5 o'clock in the morning. So, and everybody always leaves feeling way better than they did when they showed up. So, I think just focusing on that part will definitely I agree. Help with you and it's having a list, having a plan. This is why we talk about the five F's yep. and it sounds cliche. And, and next week, this coming week, we have this weekend, actually, we have our next DDC or Dolce diet certified and fitness conference. Let me actually um, get that set up. So this weekend we have that. And part of this, we actually spend an entire chapter, if you will, an hour or more strictly on the goal setting conversation. And with this, most people don't understand how important it is. And I'm going to give you a little cheat sheet right now. So what we do is we go over the five F's. What are the five F's? They are fitness, family, finance, future, and for me, those five F's are the most important aspects of being successful in life, in my opinion. Now, get that set. Now, with that, we say every single day, every single day, 
you must wake up and set a new goal for each of those five steps. A new fitness goal, a new family goal, a new finance goal, a new future goal, and a new goal for me, but it's every day, Paul and everyone else listening. Now, if you cannot wake up every day with a crayon on a napkin and write five simple things to accomplish that day, you will never be successful. You don't deserve to be successful. If you cannot sit quietly on your toilet, on your patio, at your kitchen table while laying in bed and simply write down five minor things to accomplish that day, how can you expect to be successful in anything in life? You right. do not have the discipline. You do not have the control of self to simply sit there quietly in the comfort of your own warm bed or at your table and do this. When the world becomes more challenging and you have obstacles put in your way and fear and anxiety and loneliness and whatnot creeps into your mind, that's when you're tested. If you can't set goals for yourself when things are safe and great, how are you going to be successful when things are not so great, when life goes sideways? So this setting of the goals is an exercise in self-discipline from my perspective and what we teach is to improve that it's progressive overload every single day i wake up i set five goals for myself every single day i set and achieve five goals i set and achieve five goals per day that's 35 goals per week that's 140 goals per month that's over 1500 goals per year i set and achieve and when I ask these groups and these, these certification conferences are filled with high level people of all levels. And I say, who here has written down and achieved five goals in your life? Less than 10% of the room raises their hand. And everyone watching right now, who has actually sat down and written down exactly what your goal is, when you will achieve it, the action steps necessary to get there. Nobody, less than 10%. Now, if you have the ability to do that five times in a day, 35 times in a week, Paul, you then become really fucking good at setting and achieving goals. At life. And at <laughs> life, all life. And what happens is these tiny little goals you set, each time you do it, you get better at it. And the goals get bigger and your ability to achieve them get better and better and better. The goals I set and achieve now in my life are probably harder than most people will achieve in a month or even think they can achieve. Not because I'm good or at this, because I've been disciplined in setting and achieving goals. I've been disciplined, number one, in just setting goals and then disciplined in doing what I have to do to achieve the goals. So that becomes the issue. And to Lindsay's point, and I wanted to go longer on this, it's holding yourself accountable. If you don't hold yourself accountable, why are you not going to stand naked in the kitchen at 12 o'clock at night and eat that piece of cake? <laughs> Honestly, right? Yeah. Well, who's, who's stopping you? Who's stopping you? I'm not stopping you. Lindsay's not stopping you. That has to come from within. It has to be you. And this is what we talk about. So man, I don't care about, you know, you being, you know, fucking ripped, jacked, sexy person or anything else like that. That's a byproduct of self-control. Yep. In time, that actually manifests and comes out. So to answer the question, to, to wrap it back up, just exactly what Lindsay said, you have to write these things down, in my opinion, and keep yourself accountable and write them down in your own hand with a pen or pencil or crayon on a piece of paper, a napkin. Like write them down and make it real. Once And science has shown this. If you type it into some sort of digital output, you actually defer this to somebody else, to something else. You're deferring it to technology. You're writing it down, you're releasing it as if it's actually done. When you write it in your own hand, it actually makes it real. And then what we share with our coaches during the certification and fitness conference is write it down on a piece of paper, tear that paper off and put it in your pocket. Why is that? Because you can feel it in your pocket all day long. 
you're constantly aware of it. It's always tapping you on the shoulder saying, hey, remember, we got to get that thing done. Hey, hey, we got to get that thing done. Let's go get that thing done. Come on, let's go get that thing done. It's like the kid who's constantly asking you for ice cream, right? <laughs> Except these are healthy things. These are just little tips that we use that work extremely well. So happy to, to go deeper on it if, if you want to. Yeah. I have just one thing to add. Um, a lot of th- a lot of times I like to, you know, I, we're all human too. I go through phases where I'm super good, you know, every single day writing stuff down. Here's what I need to accomplish. Um, and then there are times where you kind of fall off. It's totally normal. Everybody yeah. does it. Um, but you try to limit those times. Yeah. But another thing I like to have people do is write down like two or three things that they're grateful for. And it could be simple as like, I woke up, I'm grateful that I woke up this morning. Yeah. I'm grateful that I have a job. Um, you know, stuff like that. Easy, easy things. Cause that's another scientifically proven thing is that if you start your day off with gratitude and appreciating the little things, that will make everything else throughout your day better. You know what I mean? Like I get to exercise today because last year my back was hurt or something like that. You know what I mean? So I, I think as a society, we have really gotten away from just appreciating the little things and thinking everything sucks and everything is somebody else's fault. Um, so I, I think the gratitude piece is very important too. Yep. I agree. Fortunately, I'm, I'm realizing right now that, Apologies. The gratitude is key. Lindsay, I'm going to kick this next question on to you okay. from Daniel Santiago, and I'm going to affix a link here. How can one lower cholesterol? Some sources say to eat or not eat certain things. Great question, by the way. Yeah. So I actually was recently reading research and it wasn't from recently. It was from a while ago. So it's been around for a while, but this still has not hit mainstream sources. And the research pretty much was, okay, you have high cholesterol. The doctor says eliminate cholesterol containing, uh, you know, foods that contain cholesterol from your diet. So immediately everybody thinks of eggs, uh, cheese, animal products, things like that. But what the research actually showed was even even though these people drastically reduced the dietary or exogenous source of cholesterol, their blood cholesterol levels did not change at all. So you could almost argue to the point that you can't lower your cholesterol with diet, which is like any other dietitian watching this is probably like, ew, oh my God, what are you talking about? But because that's what was ingrained and taught to us in, in the beginning. It's like, you know, if you don't want to take cholesterol medication. You know, you're going to eat less cholesterol in your diet to reduce it from your blood. Now, some people could react to this. Some people cannot. I have students, we test cholesterol in one of my classes um, every semester. And I've got students that are perfectly healthy, you know, 15% body fat, collegiate student athlete, high cholesterol. And I always say, do your parents have high cholesterol? Yes. Okay. So there's definitely a genetic component to it. And I also think that doctors and healthcare and the internet really scares us in terms of cholesterol, that if you have high cholesterol, you will have a heart attack or you will develop a blood clot or something like that. And that's not really the case. So if you have high cholesterol, and you keep your blood glucose and your triglycerides under control, you need all of those things to create a really horrible environment for like atherosclerosis and things like that. Whereas if you have those other things under control, triglycerides are good, um, your blood glucose is good, you know, no sort of like insulin resistance, anything like that, then, and again, not a doctor, just providing my, my opinion based on what I know, is that you'll probably be fine. Um, so that's, that's kind of in a nutshell, I feel like I just talked really fast, but (laughs) welcome to my world. (laughs) (laughs) So to summarize, and I was actually, some of the links were broken. So if anyone wants to work one-on-one with Lindsay, you can click the links below this video. Also, if you want to join our certification and fitness conference this weekend, there's a few spots left. Um, so click that link below. It absolutely will be worth it. People are making up like Evan, um, iron Evan actually came back on in less than two weeks after the event, he already made back more than 50% of 
what he had paid. So the goal for Evan and every and the goal for everyone who goes through the event is to make up in month one what you had spent on the event. And Evan will likely double what he spent on the event just based upon becoming a certified coach. Uh, Barrow, the Viking over in Germany, actually gained three new clients the first day after the event and posted that based upon the sales structure that we help you build. That's all there and, and it's a part of it. So certification, work one-on-one -on -one with Lindsay, all that stuff is below. It's absolutely freaking uh, worthwhile in our opinion if, if you want that stuff. Now to touch back on the LDL issue, uh, how can one lower cholesterol, some sources say to eat or not eat? And you were pushing towards, and I apologize for, for not really listening, but I wanted to drill down a little bit deeper, more to like the genetic component mm -hmm. of uh, cholesterol, like hyperlipidemia, uh, lipidemia, uh, okay. correct, which is, you know, elevated um, mm -hmm. cholesterol. And really it's the LDL, which is the bad one. We want low LDL, high HDL, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but most people, they have the opposite. LDL gets higher and higher and higher and their HDL starts to drop, 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 drop. Right. So, and that's essentially what you were saying. Did you have any takeaways on food that can help or is it just kind of, Hey, it's your genetics and lifestyle? So I did, I did miss this part. And yes, if you, I mean, if you have high cholesterol, again, if you keep everything else under control that you're, you're probably going to be fine. Um, but that is the case. So a lot of people, HDL should be, it actually counts as like a, you know, if you have a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, and this is based on American college of sports medicine. Yeah. So you have like high blood pressure, but your HDL is above 60 it's like a negative risk factor. It like cancels out one of the risk factors because it's so good for you. Um, so looking to get above 60, below 200 total. Yep. But yeah, if you're eating a, a wholesome whole foods diet, you know, plenty of plenty of uh, plant plant based foods, fruits, vegetables, things like that, you can absolutely increase your HDL, which is definitely going to be good. Yeah. And I think that's something. So if you look at our living lean meal plan, not that this is a cure at all, but if you look at the living lean meal plan, you'll see we have a really high fiber intake. And a lot of people say, wow, there's a lot of fiber, fiber rich foods that are in the, the Dolce programs. Well, part of this is for the cholesterol benefits. Mm -hmm. In that high fiber foods tend to bind with LDL and actually help the body flush that before it is then converted and can be stored, you know, on the arterial wall kind of, you know, later on, um, and, you know, as we can get deeper in, into that process. But also the foods that we consume have HDL boosting effects. So if we look at the foods that we suggest, these are all very healthy, high fat or relative healthy fat foods that can, and I can't say definitively will, because we all have individual physiologies, we have genetic histories, and that's where we always push. You got to go to your doctor and get your blood work done. Go to your freaking doctor, get your blood work done a minimum every six months. I prefer every three months. So we can, especially as you get a little older, you can really start tracking tendencies. And I can see it's like, hey, I, I just started the, the Dolce Diet 12-week program. Bam, I want to get my blood work done early. 12 weeks later, I'll say, well, son of a gun. My LDL came down 20 points. My LDL or HDL came up 10. That's that's now trending, right? We're actually watching this trend, trend, excuse me. And then three months later, we go back again and see like my LDL came down another six points. My HDL came back up another four. Wow, that's awesome. So we can kind of stay inside that, that trend uh, per se. And that's something that's good to track, especially as, so if you're 35 or older, I'd say, hey, you should be going to the, probably it's like, if you're below 35, once every six months, getting a, a blood panel, probably good. Above 35, you know what? Maybe we get it done every four. Above 40, why not get it done every three? And as we kind of go up every five years or so, I want to see it more often because it's going to cost you a hundred bucks, maybe. You're going to blow that on, on beer and wing night anyway. You might as well just as, as say, if you go every three months, you save a dollar a day. Put a dollar a day towards your health. The blood test maybe. And most people now in, in America, you're getting your blood work done pretty much for free, you know, through your health care. You're already paying for it. You might as well take advantage of it. Right. For most of these blood panels, they're 100 bucks. 
to get a comprehensive lipid panel, um, you know, just the, the general wellness panel, as we call it, you know, check your, your, your GFR, your kidney function and all the, the basics, your thyroids, your A1C, all the basic stuff. You can even get your, your hormone panel kind of built into there. Um, we, we do not, not really a sales, but we do have a link for that below at let's get check.com slash Dolce. This is in home blood work done. And I'd say definitely get the cholesterol panel done guys and gals. Or gals, I'd say get the thyroid panel done, by the way, because gals seem to have a little bit more thyroid dysfunction than the men do. Guys have more cholesterol issues than the ladies typically do. So it's like, you know, just kind of know. And this is just, you know, based upon tendencies, um, estrogen and, and total testosterone, A1C. I mean, syphilis, if you're worried, that's there, too. They even have COVID tests, by the way. So you can click that link below. Super helpful for those that don't have the time to get to the doc. I like to go to the doc um, often. I get my let's get checked done all, also in between. So, you know, I'm more kind of a, a, a data hoarder, by the way. I, I love it. <laughs> you know, do a, what's that? <laughs> Self-research. So it's important, though, because it's like I, I'm always testing on myself, by the way. Mm -hmm. Like, let, let, let me see what happens. Like, and it was like when I was going through my vitamin D crisis. How can I, cause I was living in Las Vegas, like shirt off all day, every day. And like, we had like, we had a beautiful facility in Las Vegas and like, you could sit out front. Like we were right next to this cold press juice shop. And it was just like the beautiful Vegas sun, like in the back of our shop, we were like the Sopranos. We had like the little table outside. We'd be sipping espresso and whatnot. And it's like very like culturally acceptable to just not wear clothes in Vegas. Like, you know, to like, you know, it's hot, it's hot man. It's hot. <laughs> Like guys and gals, like tank tank tops and bikini tops. And it's dude, it's hot out there. Um, my D was low. So I was I was getting blood work done like every four weeks, making dietary changes, lifestyle changes, to the point that I finally started taking a supplemental D3 because that was the only thing that could consistently keep my vitamin D3 levels optimal. Where I could see like little bumps with food and lifestyle, but it wasn't enough because genetically that my body just doesn't lay it down appropriately. That's one of the mm -hmm. areas that I de determined through comprehensive blood work that this was an issue. But I what I noticed was my D3 was actually weighing down my testosterone. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. it was my D, it was also kind of weighing down just my general mood. You know, it, I was just kind of like, I just didn't feel good. And I was like, I'm cause I'm traveling at, it's cause I'm stressed. And as like, I wasn't traveling anymore and I wasn't stressed anymore. It was, I was still feeling those effects. And then we determined, Hey, it was a D3. Let's get this boosted. Let me do it through food and lifestyle first. Yeah. I did as much as I could saw minor elevations, but not enough to be statistically significant. And then we moved into supplemental and we immediately saw it boost up and then maintain it. And then about six weeks after that, because it takes a little while, fuck, I feel, I feel good now. And I saw my, my, my total testosterone slowly start to kind of ebb back up. Cause I tend to ebb and flow because as much as I travel and cut weight with athletes back during that period of time. So now I'm going long here, but this is the importance in my mind of getting blood work done. Cause if I didn't have blood work done, I would have just been guessing. Yeah. I, I feel like shit because I travel so much, not knowing that I'm chronically low in vitamin D, right? Had I not had blood work when I had, I would have had no idea about that. Right. It is interesting, especially with vitamin D because vitamin D has one of the more complicated, uh, processes after it gets into your body. So like the vitamin D you eat isn't the vitamin D that you use. So it gets transformed. So I'm sure you probably had some sort of miscommunication physiologically into transforming it from vitamin D to the active form, which would be, which would be D3. That's interesting. But right. there's so many, especially like, I mean, you and I live in an area that has all four seasons yeah. and especially here. I, I mean, I live in a valley. So it's a joke. It's like, oh my gosh, the sun came out for the first time all month. So it's like, it's a real thing. It's 12 degrees outside. People yeah. are not getting vitamin D from the sun, which is a huge source. Yeah. Um, and then you take somebody who might be like, you know, I don't eat dairy products. And like, it's hard to get. And, and I completely agree with you that I think a lot of people just jump real quick to taking a multivitamin or taking all these supplements. And they have like this entire pill thing in the morning. Try to do it first and learn about it, learn what's happening, you know, learn what food sources are good, learn, you know, what should your blood work be, learn about it, try to adjust it. And you're almost like doing an experiment on yourself, try to adjust it with 
just your diet first and lifestyle. And then maybe at the end need a supplement, then we'll supplement. Yeah. Agreed. And that, that should always be the way. Cause and yep. also with me, I started at a thousand I use. And then I slowly started to increase to find, well, even what's the proper dose. And that's a great point you make. Most people, they'll just throw a multi in their mouth. Yeah. Well, most of that multi is going to get destroyed in the gut. Yep. So whatever you're consuming, you're not absorbing. It's not what you ingest. It's what you absorb that matters. We talk about with in regards to food, which is why we're, you know, kind of anti artificial sweeteners and such. But with, with supplements, it's really challenging especially most of the lower quality supplements out there. They just break down in the gut. So with that, you have to start, for me, I had to really pay attention to, all right, what I'm consuming, is this actually translating? And I would only know that by analyzing my blood work. Mm -hmm. So that's why it kind of took about six weeks or so to store, start to really see where I was falling, but also paying attention to how I felt mattered too. Right. That's all a right, big thing. Move. I feel fatigued all the time. Something's going on. Something's going on. You know, I ran into this also last year. My my B vitamins were down. Hmm. And I was like, Energy. I just kind of had this like headache. Yeah. And I was just like mentally, I was just a little kind of fuzzy mentally. And it was just like, man, am I not getting good enough sleep? Maybe. Like, is do I have a sinus allergies? And it was, you know, it kind mm -hmm. of kicked in, which was a little weird. After I had been to Vegas, so like I flew to Vegas and Mursad had his fight and all that stuff. And we were in quarantine for a while. And that's kind of what I kicked it over to. The headache go, was probably from the COVID tests. <laughs> you know what? That's actually a great point because, man, they tested the hell out of us. I, 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 you're frozen there for a sec, Linz. Um I, I can't tell a story, but there I have a story about the COVID. I got to find a way to tell the story down the road. It was it was intense. It was insane. I, I got to find a, a PC way to tell this story and not get anybody in trouble. Um, but it was insane. You froze there for a second uh, when you mentioned the COVID test. Uh, you might be frozen there again for a second there, Lindsay. But I will keep moving on to the next question. Um, One percent. This is the last. Ask the dietitian before I meet. The dietitian on the DDC cannot wait, been saving since September for this 1% freaking love it. So you will, and what's your first name, by the way? Let me know down below. I, I always kind of the avatar names, I always, you know, I forget. Um, there you go. Lindsay, you froze there for a moment, just so you know. Yeah, I was trying to trying to do something, check my Wi-Fi and stuff, but. Yeah. Well, you're back. I think Boom. So 1% says this is the last Ask the Dietitian segment before. He meets you, and I'll be there too, by the way, um, this weekend at the next uh, DDC. Cannot wait. Been saving since September for this. I can't wait also. That will be this Friday night, Saturday day, Sunday morning, the Dolce Diet Certification and Fitness Conference. Click the link below if you want to take part. If you want to be involved, I would strongly, strongly, strongly suggest you jump in and, and it will be worth every penny. We will go above and beyond for sure. And I can't wait for that. It looks like Lindsay. Oh, there you go. You were half frozen there for a second. Um, so I'm excited to see you, brother. Now, Paul, is insulin resistance a real thing or BS from keto folks? No, that is definitely a real thing. And what we know is that, I'll wait for Lindsay to jump in and be able to help here. We know that low carbohydrate diets can typically assist in improving insulin resistance, right? They are in our insulin sensitivities. Um, you're back. You're not back. You're frozen again. Fancy lab over there needs better Wi-Fi, Professor Howard. <laughs> um, but it, it's not BS. And, but Paul, what I really do push towards, it's not so much that you consume carbohydrates. It is processed carbohydrates. These are the issues that increase insulin resistance or desensitize your body. Lindsay jumped out. She's going to jump back in again. Um, so these highly processed carbohydrates, these are the issues. And we This actually shirt, by the way, was a meme made to make fun of me. And 
Of course, you can't make fun of me. I turned it into a highly successful T-shirt line, <laughs> which is awesome. And still wear these. One of my favorite shirts, by the way. Um, all right. And what else do we got? We got David Kelly. Any tips on what exercises women should do after pregnancy and when to start? David, great question. We actually have our own baby book that's coming out soon, which is about my own wife's journey through pregnancy. And it, it details the lifestyle that she lived, but we lived preconception because I, as the donor also was very important that I was extremely healthy. So we went through preconception. We go through all nine months of pregnancy and we go through the six months post-pregnancy, exactly how we ate preconception, and then exactly how she ate and trained preconception during pregnancy and then postconception, how she ate, how she trained, how she lived. And we kind of bundle that with a lot of factoids from our doctors at that time who were absolutely amazing. Uh, we share this. Now, to answer your question, number one is you have to listen to your doctor. Follow your doctor's orders. Do what your doctor tells you. Number one, it's most important to follow your doctors. The type of birth matters. Was it the cesarean section? Was it the vaginal birth? Was it super simple? Was it rather rigorous? What is the age and the health of the mom during this process? All this matters. What is her training history? All of this matters. What we suggest is nutrition. Not a calorie restrictive diet, but an ample calorie diet, which means mom is eating more than enough food for herself and for baby. And she's getting all the vital nutrients she needs during this period of time. She's not eating so much though, that she's in a extraordinary surplus and she can't shake some of that non-functional weight. She no longer wants or needs, but we want to get mom back down to a body size that she is comfortable living in. Oh, there she yeah. is back. Awesome. Um, and just answering David's question on what exercises women should do after pregnancy. And I kind of went through preconception during, you know, full, full term. And then post number one is listen to doctor's recommendations. The awesome. type of birth certainly matters. Traditional vaginal cesarean, if it was extenuating circumstances. So there is no cut and dry answer here. Definitely listen to your doctor, work with your doctor. And I said, nutrition is going to be very important at first to make sure mom is starting to reclaim her body and feel better again, but not worrying about eating in a caloric deficit to get skinny again. I want her to be eating ample nutrition or ample calories, right. enough for her, enough for baby, enough to feel great, but not spilling over so much, so deep into the surplus that she can't shed some of the weight that she no longer wants, but it's mom's opinion of how she looks and feels. That's the most important thing here. We understand a healthy body mass, so we're going to lean towards healthy body mass. And then from an exercise perspective, I'm going to suggest training history matters. So what she's accustomed to, what she knows how to do, what feels safe for her. Walking is usually the, the easiest thing. Can she simply walk? Like, let's start walking and getting ample blood flow. Let's start to think about if she's accustomed or comfortable, certain forms of Pilates or yoga, something that's very passive, very easy, just reconnecting with her body again. These are, it's like reconnect with her body again. Things have shifted. Things have changed. Things are inflamed. Things are sore. This is a new body in many ways. Like God, like it's amazing what women go through during childbirth. It's incredible. I've, I've, I've witnessed it and cornered my wife through two of these things. And it's, it's incredible. But don't worry about the cosmetic, the aesthetic side. Worry about the health and functionality. And then in time, the cosmetic and the aesthetic certainly comes together. If you have anything to add, Lens. Yeah. So I don't know if you talked about this, but, and I understand people have very drastically different opinions on breastfeeding. Yeah. But from a scientific standpoint, it is the most healthy way to feed an infant. Um, it's recommended for most, if not all people. And breastfeeding can actually aid in weight loss after, after pregnancy. Um, you know, so I'm not saying only breastfeed just so you could lose weight, but it's an added bonus. 
Um, the other thing, kind of like what Mike was saying, do something at home, like some sort of uh, flow yoga, something a little bit lesser intense. And, and I not firsthand, I don't have children, but my sister has two kids and I was with her, you know, in the hospital. And after I stayed with her for a little while, often visited and things is take 15 minutes or 20 minutes when your baby is napping to do something, pull up a YouTube video, yeah. uh, yoga or something like that. 20 minute at home yoga, boom, done. Um, you know, get outside and go for a walk instead of like pacing around the house with your baby stroll it up, get outside, get some vitamin D energy. So that's, that's another thing. And I recently have spoke with two uh, of the 30 minute clients, one who was expecting, and then one who's a husband of some of, you know, his wife was expecting. So my recommendation for that would be get on a schedule and get regimented and disciplined prior to giving birth. So that afterwards, it's not like, like shit's going to hit the fan. Like if you're a first time parent, like shit will hit the fan. But if you are already kind of in this routine and you know what you're doing and all that stuff and you're and you're mentally committed to it, then it definitely will be an easier transition for you. Agreed. That get outside. That's one of the things that Brandy had, had done is we got one of those those strollers, like those outdoor kind of running strollers, though she never ran with it. But it's like, you know, kind of like bike tires on it. It just makes it a heck of a lot easier for mom to get out there and safely push instead of like the traditional um, little little kind of buggy thing. I forget what you the pram, right? That you know, kind of the traditional mm -hmm. style. Um, and that was great because literally, it just go outside and walk. If it's winter time, hey, that's fine. We get it. But get outside, and from the emotional perspective of, and this is you know me as as, as a father, kind of you know cornering my wife through this, dad. Guys listening right now, the ability to say, hey, take the baby or like, I'm going to take the kids. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. Go leave the house. <laughs> like, get out of here. I got this. Don't worry. Go be go be a woman. Like, whether or not she exercises, like, go for a walk. Go to the coffee shop. Like, if you want to go to the gym, hey, go do that, too. Like, get out of here for the emotional health, not just the physical, but the emotional health. It was very important for me to tell Brandy, like, it's okay to leave the house, mom. Cause moms have this very, like, I, I gotta be here. I gotta stay with the kids. And it's like this, um, like almost like a claustrophobic feeling, not having felt it, but, but kind of experienced it. It was very hard for Brandy to just leave the house. Yeah. And like she would then she'd be in the house. She'd be like, I got to get, the, you know, like I got to get the fuck out of here to, you know, I'm, I'm using my words, you know, kind of, you know, projecting. But hey, get out, like go outside, go for a walk, like go grab a tea, like get out of here, pull yourself away from this because there's a lot of the emotional side that goes to it. I, I think now we're kind of extending a little bit on, on this topic, but great question, David. And I think you're doing great. You're asking the questions now um, and to finish. Let your wife do what feels good. Work with her doctor. Slowly, slowly, slowly start to build. Um, Paul asks, good question here, Paul. Is the DDC good for one's personal growth as a fitness enthusiast and to be a resource, not for monetary reasons, in your opinion? Now, I know we have some DDCs in here. I'd love to see them kind of also answer. But for me, absolutely. Like, yes, this is, is very business heavy, this conference. I teach you how to build your business, how to build your brand, how to, how to make money, how to create financial independence for yourself, how to dramatically improve revenue and spend less money, how to protect the money you make. But more important than that, this is about setting goals and achieving goals. This is about becoming your best self. So from a personal perspective, my goal of the DDC is everyone who leaves the DDC, whether or not we have people who who join the event, they they don't want to work in fitness. They, they have no desire. We have very successful people who just come for the education and also for a little refresh of motivation because they're in a rut. This is for you from a personal growth. We will push you. We will push you to optimize your full potential. Lindsay and I bo both work at the highest level. We work with A-class performers, people who are performing at the highest levels. Now, that doesn't mean that they've always had 
performed at that level. And we give a lot of the best practices of what you need to do right now in this moment to start unlocking and realizing your full potential. And we go through that also. So this is a, a best practices seminar in, in many ways. Best practices on nutrition and dietetics, best practice in business and brand building, but best practices in personal development. Because if, if I'm not achieving my, my full potential as a human, I'm not going to achieve my potential as anything. Lindsay, have anything to add? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I've spoke on it before, but I guess the most recent one was the first time that I spent the whole day with you guys. And it's, it's very much education. Um, and, you know, even, even me coming on there and teaching and listening to everybody else, that's for, that's personal growth for me too. Um, and no, I, I think a lot of people, I think that's the biggest thing when, you know, I work with clients or people who want to become healthier is educate yourself. If you educate yourself and you're not just following what somebody tells you to do, but if you actually take the time to learn about nutrition and learn about, you know, fitness and health and like we were talking about blood work, learning all that stuff, you will take it more seriously and it'll hold more weight, hold more value in your life. Whereas, you know, most people are just like, oh, I should probably cut carbs out of my diet because that's what I saw in Good Morning America. But you have no idea why people are saying that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think it's it's very heavy, you know, educational based. And even for, even for me, it was very motivational just to see, just to be in a room surrounded by all these people that shared a high level of, you know, motivation and drive to not only become better business people, if that's their thing, but to be better humans themselves for yeah. them, for themselves and for their families. Yeah, that's a great point. And the network, right? Being around these, these people, these other coaches, these, these, other, or these other just individuals, because they're not all coaches and probably right. half the room is, is coaches, right? Half are, you know, fitness professionals, but the other half are not. We have Single moms that just want to be a, a, a better mom. We have, you know, individuals from law enforcement or military. They just want to perform better in their own world. We have PhDs and medical doctors, dentists, chiropractors who all come in to gain knowledge on nutrition and dietetics to then bring back to their practice because they don't have that same experience from the nutrition side. So we have a very eclectic group of individuals, but after the event, we don't just let you leave. We actually created a Facebook group that's a networking group for all of our coaches to be a part of. And every week I go in and I host a live Q&A slash chat on a specific topic. And then we all get to keep this going. So we get to keep the fire lit. And when you look at a lot of the other, the alphabet certification curriculums, what do they do? They teach you a little bit. All right, here's the physiology, the kinesiology, the biochemistry. Here's the, the subject matter. Here's your test. There's your little certificate. Give me your money. Bye. Come back two years from now when you have to re-up. That's not what we do. You go through our certification. You become a member of our team. As much as you want to embrace that, we want you to be. Like, I want to have a room full of, of just highly passionate humans who continue to exceed their potential. Now, I believe that each one of us can touch a thousand people through our through our example. Whether it's it's your your nuclear family, it's your neighbors, it's those at your job, those at your gym. Like the more people you have access to, and just look at your Facebook group. Most people nowadays have hundreds to thousands of followers on Facebook and Instagram. You have direct access to thousands of other humans. If all of a sudden now you're literally walking the walk of being a healthier, more fit person who's now a goal setter and you're starting to live that and embody that, what happens? Those people who know you, they bear witness to your success, which is going to then motivate them. So our goal here is to have thousands of individuals come through our events and stick with us and stay with us and continue this, this going forward. So once you go through our certification, then you're a part of the team. You become, you know, a, a certified Dolce diet certified coach, one of our ELPs in your area, but that's just the beginning. Then you get direct access to me, to Lindsay, like to our networking group, to the, the coaching curriculum, to our live chats and Q&As. And, and this thing continues to grow. Like we walk the journey with you. 
it's a lot more. And I've, I've been certified by probably every agency. I've, I've you know, spoken at, at many of these different events and it's all awesome. And I said, well, how can we do this better? What would I, what, what, did, what did I not like about this experience? The one thing I didn't like is as soon as I passed the test, I was ignored See ya. by like, and, and then I would only get, I would, the only email I would get was like, Hey, you got to pay a hundred dollars for a recertification or your, your CEUs are about to run out. You got to pay us. That was the only emails I would get. I was like, man, nobody's trying to see if I'm even a good coach. Right. Like I, that bothered, that's always bothered to this day. It bothered me to the point that I said F it all. And I, I just, I, I, you know, never re-upped. So I went for a while. I didn't want any, I was, I had disdain for a lot of those alphabet agencies. I was just so it, it's all money grab. And I actually spoke with the owner of one very famous. I don't want to put his name out there, but I actually got to the owner and I, we had a conversation because I tell briefly, I'll tell this story before we move on. And my buddy had just gone through a certification and it was actually owned by a pretty well-known person in the industry who I respected. I say, hey, I want to go through my buddy just went through it and gave me the textbook. And I said, Hey, like, and the textbook was like $500 and the course was like a thousand. And they wanted to charge me a thousand. And I said, well, the book's 500. The course is, is 500. I said, well, I already have the book. And I said, well, you have to buy a book. I said, I already have the book. I said, well, you, if you have that book, then the other person doesn't have the book and it's a necessary reference tool. I said, it was, this is my best friend. It's my training partner. Like he's at my, like literally like we're at each other's house all day, every day. And the book wasn't so groundbreaking. It was, it was very generic, basic, like fitness, right? Stuff that you already know. And I had this conversation. I was like, I already have the damn book. You're charging me for a book. I already have it. So I, I escalated because I'm that guy, right? I escalated. And finally, I got the owner, the owner of the company, like the guy. I get him on the phone. I say, hey, well, thank God. I'm so happy to speak with you, man. Huge fan, super excited. I said, here's the thing. Like, I already got the book. And he's like, well, you got to buy it. He's like, you have to buy the book. The same thing. I said, I, I'm, I'm literally, I'm holding it right now. Page 72. I'm reading it for you. I already have it. I just want to go through and get certified and this and that. And he's basically starts, you know, kind of calling me like, oh, well, you know, if, if you, you know, really respected it, then you would pay the extra money. I said, this is just a cash grab for you, isn't it? You don't care about having highly passionate, qualified coaches in your system. You just want to upcharge me to make money. And that was like this eye opening thing. And I'm, I'm leaving a lot of the points of this story out. Cause I don't want to identify the individual, you know, just cause that's, that's just the way it is. And I said, this is just a cash grab for you. You just want the money. You just want money. You don't care about having high quality coaches here. I understand now Fuck you, you're your stupid thing. And like, yeah. And kind of like, so that's where I, I developed, developed disdain, but also Paul, to answer your question, that's why what we do is the opposite. Man, I want you to freaking love it. I want you to go through it and just be like, this is absolutely uh, amazing. I want to stay a part of this. I want to be a part of the team and a part of the system and embody the principles. And then I want you to share and add to what we're doing. Because we just want to like be in your corner as you continue on. I think I'm, I'm, we're going a little long on this now. But to answer, like, honestly, like, you can probably see how passionate we are about this. Like, I could easily just automate this like a lot of the other things do, I could automate it. I can make it all digital. I could throw a price point on it and we could just drive. I could throw up a Facebook thing. We could just drive traffic to it and it would just print money. Like, you know, it, it would be a business model just like all the other ones out there. And all right, you know, you can set up the little automated test and whatnot and download all the PDFs that it's online. That's what most of it do. That's not what we want to do. We want it to, we want to be with you. We want to teach you. We want to learn from you. We want to answer your questions. We want to get to know you. We want to like build you and, and engage. I mean, Lindsay and I are here now for, you know, this is just over an hour live and free. This is a three day course. It, it works out to be about 20 hours of just intensity and immersion into what we do. And a large portion of the time is lots of, of group thinking and masterminding and live chats and Q and A's. It's not just here, study this and move on. So there's a lot more that goes goes into it. And I think a lot of our coaches in here, uh, you, you'll probably, you know, maybe share the information out of that, of your experience. Yeah, no, it's, it is awesome. And like to give, I mean, Mike, to give you a plug is like, you're there the entire time yeah. for the most part. 
I'm the whole the whole freaking time I'm here. Yeah. If my camera's off, I'm standing, just foam rolling or stretching, right. like watching. I'm so immersed in it. I love yes. it. And I mean, like, it's not you know, it's not it's not a cookie cutter. I hate to use that term because everybody uses that, but yeah. it, it is not that. And just speaking on the the last one, you know, we would be on I don't know the topic of protein, and they would we would I would talk for thirty minutes, and here's the, all the information, here's the science, boom, 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 and then we would have a forty five minute discussion about it. So how is this practical? How does this relate to your life? How can you implement this in, in you know your life or your or your business? So it's you know it's very immersive and like I mentioned before, it was it was good for me too. Um, so no, I think it's a definitely definitely good. Again, to, to go back to the question, definitely good for personal growth. Awesome, appreciate it. And, and again, if anybody wants to join, we have a few spots left. Click the link below. Become a Dolce Diet certified coach. But this is a conference. This is a full weekend of information, and we'd certainly love to have you. Um, now, Daniel has a question. Maybe you can help with this, Lindsay. Does it matter what type of vitamin C is used uh, with three weeks to shred it? But let's just say in general, rose hips or bioflavonoids, time release, concentrate. Do you have any vitamin C additional information or options? Um, I'm having a hard time understanding this question. I don't know if I'm being dumb right now, but <laughs> never. Is there any yeah. best form of vitamin C maybe in your opinion? I mean, no, I mean, I think the best forms of both vitamins and minerals, so all macronutrients yep. are food sources, Yeah. Um, obviously. So as, if the question is asking about supplementation, I don't think it's necessary to supplement unless, you know, you're to that point. And like we mentioned before with blood work and things like that. But as far as food sources in three weeks to shredded, I mean, you're getting a different source of vitamin C every meal. Um, you know, it's very, very wide variety in terms of uh, sources from different types of foods. So I don't know if I'm answering the question or not, but that's what, um, I, that's what I have to say. Yeah, so this is actually, it, it's a part of three weeks of shredded that we okay. do suggest vitamin C, additional vitamin C above okay. and beyond. Now, the vitamin C that we do suggest, number one, is built into the nutrition. So to your point, Lindsay, absolutely. It is the, the whole food source of vitamin C that that is huge. Additionally, there's there's certain forms of vitamin C, like when we talk about uh, ascorbic acid, that would be one of the more prevalent forms of vitamin C right. to consume. Any form of vitamin C is going to be helpful and beneficial. So we're really starting to cut some hairs um, here. But like, look toward the ascorbic acid. If I'm always saying that, I was as ascorbic acid. Excuse me. Um, as being the maybe the preferred. But instead of that, what I say is, how are you getting it? I prefer a powdered form of vitamin C over a tablet form for sure. Um, so the, the powdered form mixed in water is probably the easiest and the best way to go. Um, Nick, Nick, my man, what's up coach at work later, signed up for the My Diet program. So Lindsay knew My Diet con um client. You have quite a few actually coming through. I don't know if you've seen the, the recent influx. Um, so if anyone does want to work with Lindsay one-on-one, -on -one, click the link below. Uh, you can go through the eight-week My Diet program. Lindsay will build you the most ideal, perfect meal plan for you. Every meal, every ingredient, every single day. You speak directly to her. She becomes your personal dietitian, which uh, is excessive. And I don't know how many we can do in total. There's only so many hours in the day. So if you are interested, I would say get in line right now. Um, we have a great team of dietitians, of course, available. And if you want to work with Lindsay, I would I'd say get in there right now. Um, what else? Uh, Daniel's talking about uh, the homeschooling stuff. I withdrew my kids from state school and started homeschooling them myself. The freedom is wonderful. Daniel, I agree with that. The freedom is incredible. Our kids absolutely are thriving right now. And a lot of the parents, to briefly touch, they say, oh, but what about socialization? <laughs> Think about school. Think about school during the COVID era. What kind of socialization is happening right now in school? Is this this form of socialization you want your children, you want this to be formative in your children's life, wearing masks so they can't pick up on social cues, sitting in plastic barriers far away from their other children 
or farther away from their friends, being told that they can't hug their friends, they can't hold hands with their friends, they can't sit and play in the sandbox with their friends. Is that the socialization that you want your children to have? That's not what we want our children to have. Now, this is a personal decision for everyone, but I, I do suggest parents really rethink this, like rethink the, the and this seems to be pop culture taglines where my kids are extremely social. And this isn't dad bragging again. My kids are the first one to run up to other kids and, hi, my name's Victoria. What's your name? Do you want to play? Like, bam. And a lot of kids, they just like, they don't know how to deal with that. So my kids are very open. They're, they're very, like, very easy. They, man, it's, it's so easy for them. So anyway, take that for what it is. Ryan, done with my first client of the day. Now I can treat myself to the world's greatest free content. F you, Dolce. Ryan, my man, thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Um, Sam says, hey, Lindsay, thoughts on wheat. Is it the devil it's made out to be? Okay, so <clears throat> I read this book, and this, I think, is the problem. I read this book years ago. It's called Wheat Belly. I don't know if you've yeah. heard of it. My yeah, of course. The author, but it's probably written by a doctor. A lot of these diet books are written by medical doctors who, and I'm not bashing doctors, sometimes we get, we cross the line a little bit, but they write these nutrition books, but that's not their profession. They're a medical doctor. Yes. Um, so again, I've spoken about this before, but there are a lot of things that in nutrition work in theory, but that's not actually how it works in real life. Yep. Um, but to go back to this, you're done reading that book and you're like, oh my God, I'm never eating weed again because you just read that and it made you think in that certain way. Um, to use an analogy, it would be like we talked about watching CNN or Fox. If you watch yeah. CNN for long enough, that's what you believe. If you watch Fox for long enough, that's what you believe. Yeah. So it's it's interesting where the information is coming from, for sure. But wheat itself, I mean, what we recommend eating is very, very little wheat. Um, and it's not because it is the devil, but a lot of the foods that contain wheat are the devil. So, you know, highly processed things. Um you know, and you think of, okay, what is wheat in? Bread, pasta, things like that. Yep. So, yes, I mean, too much of too much of anything is a bad thing. But there's very little, you know, big benefit from eating a heavy, heavily wheat contained uh, or containing type diet. So, no, I don't think it's the devil. There are plenty of sources that contain wheat that are perfectly fine for you. Um, you know, but... Again, it's it's where you where are you getting your information from, um, you know. But I think that, I mean the main the main thing with wheat is that you know it increases your blood sugar, it could be very uh, inflammatory. So, no, if you eat a piece of bread, you're not going to die. But if you're eating a loaf of bread, two loaves of bread a week, of just like white bread or highly processed, refined, even wheat bread. Um, speaking of wheat, yeah, you know people think wheat bread is better. Than white bread it's really not this it's like the same thing there might be one extra gram of fiber in it yeah um so we recommend something like uh sprouted grain toast or like ezekiel bread um you know things like that that have more in it rather than just that plain refined refined wheat yep agreed and it's it's not the wheat that's the issue exactly. it's all the preservatives all the synthetic toxic chemicals that in. are in a wheat product right mm -hmm. so it's and you know we, we say that less than three percent of the population has celiac disease. That being said, you know people are like oh you know I can't have weight because of gluten and I can't have gluten because Gwyneth Paltrow doesn't eat it, right? It, it's it's just like keto or intermittent fasting. It became a pop culture headline used to differentiate a marketing campaign. Yep. That's all this is. So it's like well gluten wheat contain or gluten is in wheat but wheat products typically have a paragraph of synthetic toxic chemicals that's usually the issue it's not the gluten that's the issue for most people some people it's very devastating but the 97 or so percent of us statistically speaking can digest gluten not no problem yeah right yeah if you just look at gluten free products so Products that they make because people can't eat gluten. You got gluten free pizza. You got gluten free pretzels. You got gluten free chips. You got gluten free um, pancake mix or 
you know, stuff like that. And you just look at the gluten-free aisle in the grocery store. You're yeah. like, do I eat this? Uh, do I eat these products of the regular version anyway? Yeah. Like, do I really need a substitute for chips, pizza, pretzels, you know, all that stuff? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah, it's funny to see all these gluten, these gluten-free products. Just read the ingredients. You'd be like, holy shit. Like, hey, Windex doesn't have gluten. That's gluten-free. Like gluten-free Windex. Right? You you put that label on it. It's vegan. It's healthy. Healthy. Like, right? why not? Why Must not? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Uh, Cole has a good question. Why is it negative for, and I want to say, why is it negative? So let, let's, you know, kind of, I'm going to hone in on this right now for your body to use stored glycogen as energy after switching from fee free fatty acid receptors when completing over an hour and a half of outdoor lists while walking at a consistent pace. I will say, Cole, it is not negative. But it must be correlated to your goal. What is your goal? For me, and I'll let Lindsay speak here after this. If I'm going to be using stored glycogen, I would prefer to use that stored glycogen in a different capacity, which means if I'm going to utilize my glycogen stores, I want to do so in a much more intense type of exercise, which for me would be resistance training. If I'm going to tap into the limited stores of glycogen, I want that to be initiating muscle protein synthesis. That will not happen while walking. That will simply be an added fuel source to help bridge the gap between me starting to fatigue after an hour and a half or so of a, a fasted list. And that's what Cole's speaking about for everyone watching right now. We're talking, we talk about fasted lists, fasted lists at a low intensity, which will more preferentially utilize free fat, free fatty acids as the primary fuel source. Also enhancing the efficiency of lipolysis due to the repressed insulin. Lack of insulin actually increases lipolysis due to greater activity inside the fat cell, specifically these more stubborn fat cells. And then we're utilizing more of the free fatty acids that are, that are readily available as the fuel source. We're simply utilizing more body fat for energy. But we say, hey, 45 to 60 minutes or so, less than 90, because over about 90 minutes or so, we're going to start using a higher level of stored glycogen. I would shut it down because list is now over, the fat loss, and we only need about 40 to 60 minutes to optimally lose fat without possibly starting to wear down muscle tissue or reduce our ability to train at higher levels through, you know, possible fatigue and, and you know, there's other factors that go into it. And then I'll train in, in a glycolytic fashion later on in the day, four hours, six hours later. And I will initiate muscle protein synthesis through high intensity resistance training. So it's not a negative coal. It's just, what is your purpose? But if you're just a walking fool, it's like, Hey man, like I, I'm a hiker. I love to walk. Like I'm going to be in the mountains. I'm going to do the Appalachian trail here soon. Well, I'm going to say you need to get out there and you need to be rucking probably four, six, eight hours or more per day, getting sport specific, if you will, activity specific. But I would also say you need to carve off, you know, maybe 45 minutes every three days or so and hit some high intensity resistance training too, to enhance your ability to do so. Go ahead, Lindsay. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not a negative thing, but it doesn't contribute to the reason why you're doing lists. So the purpose of doing lists is like Mike said, is to because we're in that physiological state, we can optimize our, our fat utilization or the lipolysis, which is the breakdown of stored fat. Yep. So if we go beyond an hour and a half, you're no longer using stored fat. So the reason you went out for that walk in the first place to use fat is now over. So there's yeah. no point in continuing. Um, and kind of like what he was saying with the, with the stored glycogen, if we want to use stored glycogen and you know blood glucose, cellular glucose, do something high intensity. Um, you know, you never just want to do do less and you never just want to do something else, but do something high intensity if, if you're going to use stored glycogen. Um, so what starts to happen after that period of time is, you know, you start to feel a little hypoglycemic. So your blood sugar begins to dip slightly towards yeah. the end. 
You know what I mean? You can make it 60 minutes without any fluctuation in your blood sugar. But you start to convert glycogen into glucose to maintain, remain at homeostasis. We're homeostatic beasts, our yep. being. You know what I mean? So we want to maintain that blood sugar. So once we start to feel that dip, we're going to convert stored glycogen into glucose, which will release into our bloodstream. And what happens is a lot of people can have like a rebound effect. So your blood sugar could actually increase after a dip just during exercise. So no food is introduced right now. You know what I mean? So you're, you're out walking for an hour and a half, your blood sugar starts to dip. Your liver goes through this process that will release this glyco- uh, this glucose. And then what happens is if you have higher glucose, you're also going to have higher insulin. So it eliminates the, the lipolysis and the, the fatty acid breakdown, which is the reason you went out for the walk in the first place. So, and again, time-wise, you know, yeah. like Mike said, if you want to walk, if you want to go for a four hour hike, cool, that's fine. Yeah. Um, but for a lot of, for most people that are busy working individuals, boom, 45 minutes done, take yeah. a shower, go to work. Agreed. And that, that 45 minutes is probably about almost ideal. I think from a time investment perspective, when we're trying to lose body fat, that 45 minutes really seems to tick all the boxes. Like mm-hmm. 30 minutes is is, ju- is about long enough to kind of initiate the fat loss benefit. 45 minutes really seems to be about ideal for most people. Um, and then like once we get like 45 to 60 minutes, once we get over 60 minutes, I start to think like, hey, we only have so much recovery ability and I would much rather have two 45 minute sessions yeah. instead of, one 90 minute list session, right? Cause there's only so much recovery ability available and there's only so much time in the day. Also it's like, wow. I mean, if you have the ability to do two 90 minute sessions per day, in addition to job and family and personal pursuits and all that stuff, I'm not mad at you. Like, that's great. But if like, if I can get 45 minutes of low intensity training and then 45 minutes of moderate to high intensity training in my day, I'm going to be in a freaking amazing shape. And our goal is, is to be able to do everything, fully express ourselves athletically. Um, so, yeah, great question. I, I saw as I was kind of scrolling through, um, Tom has one. And Tom, I'm going to get to you. Um, Corito, great question. I've done push-pull legs for years, but now I'm going to go try – push-ups, pull-ups, and bodyweight squats. Can I do the three of these every day or should I split them up like push-pull legs? Lindsay, what do you think? Yeah, so I'm not sure if you're going to exclusively be exclusively be doing push-ups, pull-ups, and body squats, but it just depends on how many days you want to work out. So if you're going to train three days a week, then yeah, you could do them all in one day. So it's a, it's essentially like a full body lift. A lot of people work out in this in this style um, where they're doing, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or maybe four days a week with a day in between of full body lifts. Okay. So that would be, you know, push ups, pull ups. You got chest, back, and lower body. You're pretty much hitting, hitting everything. But if you're going to work out every single day, then no, I wouldn't recommend doing all of them on, on one singular day. So again, I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll kind of expand it that if you are going to do, you know, a pushing type lift, a pulling type lift, and then a leg day and you wanted to work out six days a week or seven days a week, then yeah, absolutely split them into body parts. Um, But if you are mixing up your workouts, maybe you're going to throw some cardio in on the off days, then yeah, you could do definitely do, you know, a full body style lift. And I agree with that. Um, It's really, once we're training at lower intensities with regard and, and intensity is, you know, the proportionate ratio of weight being used relative to our ability, right? And, and I'm thinking on with regards to the ability to recover. Body weight, you think, and I was to say, well, look at a wrestler. Wrestlers practice every day, two hours a day. They don't really lift a lot of weights in season. Look at the right. physique of a wrestler. You're, it's hundreds, sometimes thousands of squats per day and push-ups per day and partner carries per day and chin-ups per day, all that stuff per day. You can whip yourself into amazing shape or you look at the military, you look at gymnasts. Gymnasts sport is exercise, right? Everything they do. So when you look at it like that, it's like, wow, you can really build an amazing physique. 
you might not gain a lot of weight. And in fact, you might lose weight. You will get, you know, um, shredded. shredded and strong and holy shit, you become amazing. So I love that. We, what we try and do is we try and employ at least one body weight movement into all of our resistance training. So if you think about a lot of the stuff we do, lots of our warm-ups and cool-downs, you see us talk at lots of like bodyweight squats and goblet squats and, and walking lunges and, and you know, chin-ups. And, and, you know, we do push-ups and weighted push-ups and dips and push presses and uh, um, not push presses, um, uh, uh, floor presses. A lot of these exercises are very bodyweight centric. We do also, you know, heavy like Zercher, good mornings, and we do lots of progressive overload with high levels of resistance, but we also, cause we work with so many athletes, we want to keep that athleticism also. And we want to keep the relative strength curve. Now, Ryan just asked about how I get an invite to the DDC Facebook page. Ryan is a Dolce diet certified coach. So I just threw right now, I'm posting the link down bottom. So Ryan, all of the current Dolce diet certified coaches, the link is here below. Click the link to be invited or to, you know, to join the group. You'll be asked questions and then the team will go through and you will be approved into the group based upon your status as a certified coach. I want everyone to be a part of this group, but this group is only reserved for certi Dolce Diet certified coaches. This is an exclusive peer-to-peer -peer group. Anyone who goes through our event, this upcoming DDC, which you can click the link below, you will then have access to this group. This is a brand new group. We've completely uploaded or updated it. We have a few other groups out there of our certified coaches. They're all kind of, you know, exclusive to certified coaches. This is our newest one and most robust. This is where all the high level content will be. So I just say that because a lot of people and what always happens is they click the link and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm a coach. Well, we're going to check. <laughs> and I, I would love for you to be a coach, but if you are not yet a coach, please go through the certification event. I would love for you to be a part of it. But our current coaches, and I see there are quite a few of our current certified coaches in the room, whether they're hanging out and then asking questions or just kind of hanging out, click the link. I want you to be involved um, and be a part of it. And I actually have a different Facebook um name. I have a few different Facebook profiles. This one that's associated, you probably didn't find it because it's one that's only associated uh, with, with this group. Just a little FYI right there. Um, much love. Ryan, you got it, man. Um, Ali, what's up, Alan? Good to see you. We are having an awesome day ourselves over here. Um, DK says, coach, why don't you develop a body weight course to follow along with the Dolce diet? We're working on that right now. It will be uploaded to our membership site. So if you go to the Dolce diet.com, you can click the link below. You can save 25% right now on the four week or 12 week personalized diet and exercise program. And we have a body weight program that's coming soon, all for free. So if you're a member of the Dolce diet platform, you will have free access to the body weight program. Uh, which will be freaking awesome. Everything in there will, will be free to you. And if you're a member of the Dolce Diet.com, whatever we put out remains free to you guys moving forward. Um, Boris says, I often sit at my desk for hours after my workouts. How bad is sitting down after working out? And is it better to move around or at least be standing up? Any thoughts on that, Lindsay? Yeah. I was going to say, when I have to sit for a while, even, even doing this, I do what you just did. I just go like that to like <laughs> yeah. adjust my body. You know, I'm constantly moving around. I have like restless leg syndrome, but uh, not really, but kind of. Kind um, of. I just can't sit still. But no, I mean, a lot of people are confined to what they do for work. Um, and I know this is, I'll speak about the exercise first and I'll come back. Okay. So how about a sitting down after working out? Depends on your workout. Um, you know, did you cool down from your workout? Did you do a little stretch? Um, you know, did you do a little recovery work or did you just work out and boom, sit down? Yeah. So I would definitely recommend, you know, a cool down, a stretch, because, you know, if you do something super high intense and then you just sit down for eight hours for work, you're going to get super stiff, super, super stiff. Everything's going to be tight. Um, you know, you might be sore for longer. And there is research for uh, a couple different things. So at a cellular level, kind of walking around and moving a little bit, stretching after a workout is going to be better for recovery. Um, and then kind of the, the exterior portion is 
muscle soreness could also be reduced after a really intense workout by moving around a little bit more after working out. So more of like an active recovery versus a passive recovery. Now, speaking on the desk, because I know a lot of people, unfortunately, are confined to the desk, but yeah. especially in this <clears throat> in this pandemic, I have a lot of coworkers that invested in standing desks. So it's literally just like a podium where you have your computer set up. You know, you might have a, ch a chair that's really high, so you could sit down if you need to, like more of like a stool or an adjustable desk chair. But getting a desk where you could sit or stand, they make adjustable desks uh, pretty inexpensively just so that, you know, maybe you sit down for 45 minutes, you stand up for an hour, you know what I mean? So you're back and forth. Um, the other thing I recommend is keep water at your desk. This is like a silly trick, but keep water at your desk and drink that all freaking day. Because the more water you drink, the more often you'll have to go to the bathroom. And you can't Ooh. go to the bathroom if you're sitting at your desk. So you have to get up, go to the bathroom. Maybe you work in an office building where you have to go up and down the stairs or something like that. So definitely make sure, and if, you know, if it's not for getting up for natural causes, just intentionally get up for, you know, a few minutes, at least every hour. I like that. That actually drink more water. So you have to stand okay. up and use the restroom. That's a great, great one right there. Um, here in my facility, I can't turn the camera far enough. I'll take a photo of it. I actually built a standing desk with my plyo boxes. Nice. It's, you'll love it. It is it's the perfect height. So I can actually stand up with my arms fully down, like on the, and I can sit there and I have it raised. So like the way the plyo box, it look kind of looks like Jenga. Yeah. It, it looks ghetto as hell, by the way, too. Cause I like, I got coffee cups on it. I got like a, a collared shirt, like hanging off the side of it. It's like my, my, you know, I could probably live in that thing. I got everything I need. Like I got coffee. I got, I got an extra shirt. Um, what else? I got a mask. I could see a mask sitting on it right now and all my tech is there. Um, but anyway, and I agree. So I'm sitting now, I actually have, um, cushions here. So you can see like, I got like the back support. Um, and then I have even one of these. So like when I do have to sit in these chairs, like I really try and do my best to focus on spinal alignment. It helps me keep the arch in my back. It like helps with compression. So my uh, coccyx, right? Is that what it is? Can actually kind of, you know, fit in the hole and not have that upward compression of falling on the seat. So it, it certainly helps to a degree, but it's funny, like during the DDC, cause we're here, like we're, we're in the cockpit, right? Stuck in the chair in a way, teaching the whole time for like a few hours. Now we build in those breaks, like stretch breaks, get a walk outside breaks and all that stuff. But you and I, we're kind of, you know, in the hot seat for a while and it gets, I, I feel it. My hip flexors get super, super gnarly, you know, super tight. So I'll like have to like foam roll and get on my little bean and, and all the other stuff. Um, so to answer your question, Boris, cause I know this is, you know, about after your workouts, but it doesn't working out or not really doesn't matter. It's like, you know, if you're in your desk for 45 minutes, you got to spend at least 15 minutes standing up. And I, the, the nature of the job, and, and Lindsay had a great point about building that stand up desk if you can. And sometimes it's as simple as just like you have your normal desk. Don't make it like just get a box. Yeah. Stick your laptop on top. Yeah. And just give yourself that little bit of time. Um, you know, we're in the, the camping, you know, ca purchasing a, a camper right now. And it's like, we're just like in that rabbit hole, like the YouTube rabbit hole of like van life and camper life and like all this stuff. And you see how creative people get because everyone's you got to work. Right. So people like in campers, they still got to work. So it's like these got a super creative like stand up desks or like the way they're like, you know, like affixing like their laptops and like, you know, you get like your your remote keypad and, and mouse and whatnot and you can kind of like stand and like do all your 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 motions while the screen is actually up higher so right you know it's but put a, like i <laughs> i put a lot of thought into it if i'm stuck in this chair for too long i feel like shit for a couple days yep. my hamstrings get super tight my hip flexors get super tight like my my back starts pulling me the wrong way like i'm i'm fucked up Pardon my language. Yeah. Um, buy, it, buy a $10 lumbar support pillow. 
for your chair. I have one in my car. I look yeah. like an old person with a lumbar pillow in my in my car, but I have some some lumbar spine issues. Um, you know, if and I sit and if I sit the wrong way for a really long time, I'm probably going to herniate a disc. Yeah. So it's you know you're taking care of yourself in all aspects of life. Yep. Yeah, one thing is I, I've been walking a lot, especially now that the weather's starting to break and like that's walking is my preferred list. Like I have an elliptical in my house. We have a Peloton. We have some of the gadgets. I got an assault bike and I got some of the gadgets, right? Walking is by far my preferred cardiovascular activity. It's, it's If I could only do one form of exercise, it would be walking, not deadlifts, not squats. It would literally be walking, thinking long term. But now when I'm, I'm walking, I'm ultra conscious of posture. And it's something as simple as like lifting the shoulders up, bringing them back down, and then pulling my scapula into my back pockets, right? Mm -hmm. So as I do that, I can feel my entire spinal column just kind of lock in. And then it's most people, they kind of fall forward when they walk. It's actually as I stand up and pull my shoulders back, I'm thrusting my pelvis forward to create neutral spinal alignment, right? right? So I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, going through that, you know, triple rotation, if, if you will, of, of, you know, tilting the pelvis. Yet hip flexors are so tight. Most of us, and I'm kind of speaking to everyone sitting down right now, our hip flexors get so tight that we actually feel like we're standing up straight as we're leaning forward. Because the hip flexors, if I can stand here, the hip flexors actually shorten and then most people, they start walking around like this, where you have to push yourself even farther. And as I do that, I can feel those hip flexors eh, like resisting me, fighting me, right? So when I, I walk, I actually practice that. And it feels like I'm, I'm kind of falling backwards. But when I see myself in reality, I'm finally standing up straight. It's crazy. So, and it's just that awareness. We speak about being aware and intentional and mindful, definitely with postural alignment. And then I kind of focusing on proper gait, you know, the proper like heel to toe strike as my feet find the ground and spreading the toes when they reach out and touch and like keeping that awareness, pressing off the ball, the, the ball of, of my, my foot and kind of like getting that glute engagement. It's trying to like press off the ball and then contract the glute to bring that leg backwards and just having that whole awareness. So should you ever see me walking and you wave and I don't wave back, I got so much shit in my mind. I'm just trying not to be a racked up old dude as I'm walking. You're in the zone. What that you're in the zone. I'm in the zone. I'm like, look normal, look normal. Like walk, walk like a like, human walk. supposed to. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's what it is. Uh, what else? I saw Ben Boyer. Very, very kind. Where is it? Ben. Benjamin Boyer with the $20 Super Chat donation. Benjamin, the very kind of you. Uh, the Gold Dolce and we'll say Go Lindsay. And also with a $5 big baller, Benjamin. Um, exactly. Let the old people who need it go first. Unfortunately, it feels like we're treating them like crash test dummies. That's a great point, Ben, talking about the vaccine. And it's like they're in that, that category of they're also scared. Right. And, and, and I'm at that age in life and my family is of that age, that that higher tier. They're all in that risk category now. All my aunts and uncles, they're all above 65 years old. Most of them are, are like in the 70s. And we have pretty good um, longevity genes. My grandfather lived to believe, I think, 99. My uncle's in, I think, 82 right now. I have other you know, grand uncles and aunts who are like in the 80s to 90s. It's that Native American blood that we have. Um, ants that are, you know, 78 and 76, 78, you know, all that. So we got some pretty good longevity genes, but at the same time, they're all freaked the fuck out. It's just, it's a mad dash to get these vaccines and I get it, but I would much rather see them stay a little more socially distant, just a little bit longer and sit back and watch I don't want to, I can't tell the story, but I actually had a family member go to one of the sites. Well, I, I will tell the story. She actually went to one of the sites over the weekend. She said there were, there were thousands of people there. She was like number 3000 or so of the day to get treated and like, all right. And, and of an age and, and a, you know, a lifestyle that, you know, probably should be in line. And somebody in the room 
who actually got one of the, the, the shots was actually taken out on a gurney, put in a, the ambulance and driven away. Doesn't know what happened, but that happened. Right. That that freaking out. Now, who knows? Maybe she fell and bumped her toe. Who knows? But part of the protocol is you have to sit there for 15 minutes after getting the shot to see, like, are you having some sort of negative reaction to it? Which a small percentage of the population likely will based upon clinical trials at the expectation. So just be aware, you know, make personal decisions for yourself. Scary stuff. Uh, well, a couple more, then we'll, we'll jump out of here. Um, ID Vodka says, good evening. Cheers from Dubai. Hello, hello, hello. Richard says, Mike, you got some native blood in you. Cool, bro. How much, if you don't mind me asking. So I am a Chickasaw of the Chickasaw Nation. Me personally, I am 116th um, by blood. I do have my, my, my card. I am a, a proud member of the Chickasaw Nation. My bloodline, my family is the the largest bloodline which we call at large so here in new jersey my family represents the largest largest bloodline of the chickasaws here in new jersey i don't know how many there are of us there's a pretty massive um grouping of us my grandfather actually grew up on a reservation like down in oklahoma um so you know i think if i'm in a 16th that means my mom's an eighth and however that kind of gets broken out he was much closer to, I don't, I forget what his is total. He was, you know, considerably older. He'd be about 120 right now. So he was, yeah, he would. Cause I think he passed at 99 years old. The one who I previously mentioned, um, his like brother lived to be like 96. His mother lived to be like 102. So they have some serious genes on their side. Um, my niece actually went to uh, law school down there in, in Oklahoma and, uh, you know, I have cousins who who actually work on the reservation and all the, all the fun stuff. So what's part of getting a camper is we're going to actually go and stay down on the reservation for a little while and just kind of like I didn't have the ability because of poverty <laughs> here in New Jersey to really embrace it, but we have the ability now to to expose our children um, to go down there and, and see their aunts and uncles and kind of stay with some family down there so we can really kind of um, you know reestablish our roots. Uh, with uh, our, our native blood. It's awesome. Fun it's, fact. it's pretty cool, right? So we're, we're, we're certainly very, very proud of it. Um, you know, I don't pretend that, you know, I, I, I didn't grow up on the reservation. I kind of grew up here, you know, in New Jersey, but, you know, we do have very strong family, you know, ties down there. A lot of our family still goes there, right? And spends quite a bit of time. We have family who live down there and uh, we're actually here through the Dolce Diet. We, we've worked with the Chickasaw Nation on a few different projects behind the scenes, uh, mostly dedicated towards youth education, um, as we'll continue to do as our nonprofit continues to kind of build um, as we get the infrastructure set up. So that, that's a part of what we'll be doing here, um, you know, because it, it matters. But that's, you know, we'll do with the, you know, the, the, the Chickasaw Nation, but also here locally. Also, it's not like, you know, we're not going to take care of our local communities, which we're we do right now. We, we sponsor local youth organizations. We donate uniforms to economically repressed teams. You know, so they can like walk into the gymnasium and they can have like this the cool like new gear. You know how that feels, right? Oh yeah. You know, so that's kind of what we do. But again, so I appreciate that, Richard. Thank you. Um, that's and, Look good, feel good, play good. And that's exactly it. And it's important, especially for children, mm -hmm. right? Confidence. Confidence. And and you know, because I remember not to you know you know play my my small little violin too loudly, but I remember. The only clothes I had were hand-me-downs. They were all from like donation stores, right? And I would kind of like have that, like, yeah, all my friends, because like, that was like when like, um, like skate and surf was such a big deal, and like you know all like the the you know town and country like TNC surf and just like whatever like O'Neill and like all that like the stuff of those days, you know. Um, I, I forget as I'm sitting here right now, and I had like whatever because when you play recreation sports, you get a free T-shirt, right? So I'd have that free T-shirt until it fell off me. You know what I'm saying? So I'd like be wearing all that gear and I'd be wearing like my sister's hand-me-down sneakers. And then all these other kids had this like fresh fly, like brand new gear. So I think that's part of why I'm so motivated to like now donate uniforms to other kids and teams of, of, of you know, organizations who maybe they don't have the funding to do that. So they can walk in and because where we live here and you're familiar with the Jersey Shore a little bit, right, Lens? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So where we live here, you have these super affluent communities, like $10 million homes, literally right next to homes that maybe aren't worth $10,000. Yeah. Right. So there's these little, like, you know, we, we call them post stamp towns. They're like these one mile square towns, bang, 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 all up and down the shore. One jurisdiction, man, million dollar homes. Next one, it's like they can't even afford to have a police officer. Like they, they can't afford to, like, there's nothing. Right. So it's just kind of that, that type of cultural diversity. So what we try and do is we try and donate the uniforms to some of those repressed teams who play against their neighbors who are super rich. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and it, like the kids don't know. It's just like they're there having fun. They don't know, you know, you don't know poverty and whatnot when you're a kid, but you do realize, like, man, <laughs> their gear is sweet and ours is the same shit. You know, my, my big, my older brother wore this stuff, you know, eight years ago. What's going on here? Anyway, anyway. Um, Not to get uh, too off topic, I actually have a question. Yep. Did you, um, I just was reading the news last night about like the brush fire yep. on the Jersey Shore. Yep. Is that close to you? That was close, actually. And uh, it was, so this is Monmouth County. It was in Ocean County. Okay. So maybe 10, 15, you know, minutes away. But one of our fire engines here, because I'm actually friends with the fire chief in town. We're actually at mm -hmm. a, a Irish uh, St. Paddy's Day party, right? A porch party, as we call it, which is awesome. Best neighborhood ever. And, and he was there. And, you know, he's kind of on his walkie that Belmar actually sent one of our fire engines down mm -hmm. to help them go badly. He said it was pretty gnarly what was going yeah. on. And there was a few towns that were dealing with these brush fires. Very dangerous time right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was weird because it's like, I mean, even here, too, our climates are very similar. But like it got super warm and then it got super cold. Yeah. It's, it was 70 degrees on Thursday and it snowed on uh, Saturday yeah. or Sunday. And the wind gusts are out of control. The wind has been insane. So, yeah, I yeah. saw that. It looks scary. And we, we were actually getting advisories that this is, like, a very dangerous time for fires. Mm -hmm. I think because the cold, it, like, it dries everything out. It Dry freezes it, out. it down, dries it out. But then as the heat kicks up, I, I, you know, I need to get somebody on who has a, a better understanding. But we do know that it, it's very dangerous right now and like and with these wind gusts that just blow yeah. through like everything in our backyard thankfully we like cleaned it yesterday but it was brutal like mm -hmm. you could hear like just the whole wind just ripping through last night it was it was pretty dangerous especially yeah. if they're out there fighting fires with winds like that mm -hmm. that's that's scary stuff yeah i was dodging trash cans on my way to work this morning <laughs> Dodging trash cans? Oh, yeah. They're just blown out into the middle of the road. Nice. Like, oh, another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, like, like Frogger, right? Yes. <laughs> um, let's see here. What else do we have? Um, Archie asks, Deepak, how much can I lose as a girl in the gym for almost two months? You want to take this, Lindsay? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, contact. if we're talking about, talking about weight – it all depends on where you started. So, you know, if your goal is to only lose five pounds, it could be, you know, for a lot of people, it's, it's not, it's not losing. That is the goal, but it's a shift in, in physique. So you're getting rid of some of that excess body fat. You're adding some lean muscle tissue. So somebody could weigh the exact same after two months, but look completely different. Yep. So that is something to consider. But again, it depends on the body weight. You know, if somebody has 50 pounds to lose, and they're regularly going to the gym for two months and paying attention to their nutrition. I mean, you could lose 20 pounds. Yeah. Easy, depending on what you're doing. Um, I'll give you I'll give you a plug here. Three weeks to shredded. I mean, people lose ridiculous amounts of weight on three weeks yeah. to shredded, which is a little less than two, like two months, month or no, it's like one month. Yeah. Um, but no, it definitely depends on you know, where you started, what your goal is. But no, you could you could do a lot in two months. Two months is that's a lifetime. Yeah. You know, like we say on, on three weeks to shredded, three weeks to shredded is designed to lose 21 pounds in 21 days. Now, not everyone will lose that. It depends on how much weight you have to lose and how yeah. compliant you are to follow the plan. But that's the way the plan is written. And that's what we have achieved with the majority of our professional athletes. Like that's kind of the average weight loss for that, the way the program was designed. And when you look at people's results, regular folks, you know, I call them, you know, that's me, an everyday athlete. I'm not fighting in the UFC, right? But I want to be fit. I want to be healthy. I want to be athletic. 
that is not uncommon on three weeks of shredding. Individual results will vary. Once we go to an eight-week program or a 12-week program, let's say on our 12-week program, a 40-pound weight loss would be expected. Like, I'm always super stoked when I see it. When someone's like, oh, my God, I lost 40 pounds in 12 weeks. I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. That's about what I would expect. If you've done it and you had the weight to lose, exactly. right? If you had the weight to like, I probably couldn't lose 40 pounds on the 12-week program. I would probably maybe lose 12 to 18 pounds in total because I'm a little closer to my ideal body composition ratio. But not that long ago, I probably would have lost more than that for sure, right? You know, get a little fluffy in the off season and whatnot, right? That's normal. So how much you have to lose? So for this young lady, for Ar Archon, um, man, you can, you can lose so much. It depends on what you have to lose. But what we say is let's focus on today. Let's make these decisions today. Let's get better today. Let's eat, hit our meals today. Let's get our training in today. Let's get our sleep in today. Let's manage our stress today. And then the two months is going to take care of itself. Like that, that's really the, the big picture and good for you. Keep going. Now, if you want, click that link below to the online weight loss plan. Three weeks of shredded or living lean, the four, the 12 week program. We have a 25% discount for you. Or if you want to work one on one with Lindsay, there's a link down there also to work one on one and have Lindsay actually create your most ideal best program. Or you can just do a 30 minute consultation one on one with Lindsay. That's all available. Click the links below for, and that's available for anyone as long as we have the time to do so. These, so these things do book out. You can be put on a waiting list and whatnot. And that's all fine. It's certainly worth it. Um, Sean says, Dolce, do I get the Dolce shirt if I timestamp this since the legend Dave B is gone? Sean, yes, you do. Yes, you do. If you want to start the timestamps, definitely go in, make sure you format it appropriately, like zero colon, zero, zero colon, zero, zero hyphen, and then whatever topic we talk about. But if you do that, Sean, I will gladly and happily um, send you one of our, our Dolce Diet shirts, and they're super cool. Um, military green with a high um, um, uh, quality, like gold front and back logo, super dope. So do it, Sean. I'm in, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. We're two hours deep into this, so I think it's time to go. Wow, that went quick. Um, yeah. Guys and gals, you are freaking awesome. Wait, before we go, I did have to say one thing. This episode is brought to you by Certified Piedmontese. Go to Piedmontese.com and feed your family the same way I feed mine. Right now, use promo code DOLCE to save 25% on grass-fed, grass-finished beef with free delivery. That's Piedmontese.com. At Piedmontese.com. I almost forgot. I almost forgot. I almost forgot. And we get nothing. I, I get zero... Um, commission for that. So that discount is completely passed on to you guys. The, the, the Dolce discount code, you save 25%. Use promo code Dolce. That's completely passed on to you. I don't get paid if you use it or don't use it. It will save you 25% plus free shipping on orders over $99. Grass fed, grass finished beef. Every cut you can think of is there for you. This is the only beef that we eat. So I always love to share that. And a big thank you to Certified Piedmontese for making this available to our community. Lindsay, you have anything else to share before we get out of here? I don't think so. I'm ready for consistent warm weather. Yes. I always talk about weather, but I'm ready for the weather. I'm ready to sweat my ass off outside. Yes. I'm sick of this wind, sick of this cold. I'm ready for it. I'm but ready. With warm weather comes less clothing. So got to hit the gym. Got to get those curls going. Earl, for the girls or boys, girls, you know, curls for myself. Yes. I don't need to justify my physique for anyone else and i agree and summer's coming right summer's coming quick we've been saying this since december yeah summer's coming now we're here in march and we've had a couple days where it's like uh-oh like summer's almost here mm -hmm. and pretty soon we're going to be one or two more of these episodes and we're going to be like we told you Yep. Summer's coming. Now people are inviting you to barbecues and pool parties and going to the beach and going to the lake and going to the river are you going to be the first person to take your clothes off? That's like, that's kind of the thing, you know, you know, I mean, you know, you're not going to jail. You're following all legal laws of, of keeping things covered, but are you going to be the first person to put on your bikini, put on your bathing suit and just go have fun 
with no self, not being self-conscious. That's all that matters. Yep. Getting your body to the place that you are not self-conscious about. You look exactly the way you want to look for you. That's what this is about, right? You don't have to be a bikini model or a bodybuilding bro. Do you look your best as determined by you? If not, well, it's time to put in some work. And we have right. the time right now to put in that work. We still have some more sweatshirt, hoodie, and, and sweater days ahead of us. But now's the time to get on a plan. Now's the time to tighten up the meals. Now's the time to start moving our body. 30 to 45 minutes of low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity every morning and something a little more intense, a little higher intensity body weight or, or Pilates or Zumba or cardio kickboxing or kettlebell or powerlifting, whatever later on in the day. Like we need a little bit of that split, a little bit of that spread, but now's the time getting your ass to bed nine hours before you have to wake up, optimizing sleep, managing stress, cut that crazy ex-lover out of your life like quit that shitty job fix the brakes on your car pay your bills on time manage your external stress like that's going to have it maybe we'll next time we'll talk about the impact of stress on body fat and awesome. stubborn body fat areas i think yeah. that's actually a good one so we'll talk about that next time but there is a direct correlation to your levels of stress and body fat accumulation so come on, let's get it going. Let's get let's get on top of this. Again, click those links below. Become a Dolce Diet certified course or certified coach. Join us this weekend, March 19th, 20th, and 21st. You know what? I'm going to hold on. Let me see right now. Stay here. Stay with me right now. Um, I'm I'll talk, I'll talk as you're pulling it up. What's so, that? I'll talk as you're pulling it up. Go. So everybody, you guys think like, okay, it's March 15th. We've got... April 15th, May 15th, for those of us that live in colder climates, you're like, shoot, I have got two whole months before I need to be, you know, ready for a tank top. Okay. But as Mike mentioned before, you need to do something intentional every single day and not think, oh, I still have two months. I still have a month. Before you know it, it's going to be here. And before you know it, it'll be too late. So taking the time to do something intentional for yourself, for your health, for your fitness, for your physique, if that's your goal, every single day. That is exactly it. And I just created right now a 25% discount code. If anyone is interested, let me put this out right now for this DDC, for this certification event. Ooh, you guys are lucky. <laughs> All right. So this is for you guys right now. Um, promo codes. Let's see. see. All right, so I'm putting this down right now for anyone who wants it. 25% discount code right now for this next DDC, Dolce Diet Certification and Fitness Conference. Bam, there you go. Click in the link below. YouTube 25 is the discount code. You will save 25% to become a Dolce Diet Certified Coach to join us Friday, Saturday, and Sunday during this event live and remote via Zoom. Lindsay and I in your home, I mean, via the technology, of course, and having an amazing conference with you. So use that promo code if you are certainly interested. We would love to see you in there and take part of it. Um, anything else we got, Lindsay? I think, think that's it. I think that's it. Well, What's we will today? be back once again. Oh, wait, look at Joe. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Hold on. Down 65 pounds on Living Lean since late December. V Joe 16. I'm actually screenshotting that right there. Bam, 65 pounds following our online program. That's the 12 week online plan. Click that link below. That is there for you. This is the save 25% YouTube 25 code right there. Dolce Diet Shop.com. Click on that. Get ready. I am excited for you guys to be a part of it. I can't wait to meet you. Who is ever a part of the group? Just running through some comments. Jock! Thanks for the episode, Coach and Lindsay. Jock, thank you for being here, for being a part of it. Brian S., do not worry. You can go back and watch the live replay. Leave comments below the live replay if you haven't. Make sure you subscribe to this channel um, if you do not yet. Ben Boyer, again, 
Big Baller Ben. Just saying thanks, guys. Killer, motivational, and strategic. You guys are the bomb. Much appreciated. Ben, thank you for being here and for being a part of this. Um, Thomas Lowe will be ready. Ready for summer or ready for the DDC, Tom Lowe. Excited to have you as a part of it. Lisa, be consistent. Not motivated because then you won't work out. Ooh, that's a good point. I like that. I like that. Sean lost 180 pounds thanks to the Dolce diet. Thank you both. Boom, Sean. How about that? Congratulations to you. That is freaking phenomenal right there. 180 pounds down. Makes me so happy. Warms my heart. All right, guys and gals, this is it. This is time. Lindsay, thank you for being here. I appreciate you, you. and everyone hanging out. You guys are awesome. Until next time, boom. <laughs>